Welcome back to my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this one right here. The in-season tournament. Another Mickey Mouse event. Another Mickey Mouse event. Are you kidding me? So let's talk about this. <laughs> let's talk about this one because something doesn't seem right. Something ain't right. So if I'm not mistaken, I think it was like 11 or 12 teams have already played in this so-called tournament. And we'll talk about the tournament in a minute and define what a tournament really is and what a, a tournament, a real tournament has always been, right? Things just seem to get adjusted and changed and sidestepped all this stuff since LeBron James has been in the league. Basketball is just not basketball no more. I mean, the, the in, basketball at the highest level, the NBA had to be changed. And now basketball in general has been changed from college to high school to the playgrounds because of LeBron James. You see how they play, right? It's because they had to adjust to LeBron James. And we'll talk, we can talk more about that in a minute. We know about that. But if I'm not mistaken, like, oh, 11, 12 teams have played already. And the Lakers haven't played yet. Guess what? The Lakers don't play their first in season tournament game until Friday. Guess what? Teams like the Warriors will already have played two because the Warriors play on Friday also. Huh. Not to mention the Lakers have been off since Sunday. It's been a lot. Their last game was Sunday. The Lakers don't play another game until Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Huh. Folks, when the Lakers have played on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't play the last game until Friday. So they needed, literally, they needed a whole damn day off to play again at home. And then they needed another two days off to play at home again. I'm going to look at that see if that's right. But I know that they played at home on Sunday. And now they're playing at home again on Wednesday. We'll make sure that's right. Don't worry about it. So, now let's go all the way back to Friday. So Friday, they played at home and they played the 76ers. They didn't play on Saturday. Then on Sunday, they played at home again and they played the Raptors, right? Remember, they needed a whole nother day off to play again. They played Friday, the sorry Sixers, and then they played the sorry Raptors. You can already see who's making the schedule. Just want to make sure so nobody say, man, you cap it. They didn't play Monday. They are not playing today. So they play the Grizzlies tomorrow at home. Let's look at Thursday. They're not playing Thursday. Friday, they play the Spurs in San Antonio and they will they'll probably destroy them and we'll talk about Wimby in a minute There's people leaving me comments talking about Wimby um, and I really don't have much to say about that um, I don't have nothing I don't have nothing bad to say about that but look man the Lakers are a joke who is making this schedule and we already know this happens every damn year what happens at the end of the season, their schedule is backloaded with all these back-to-backs. And they're crying and they're moaning. 
That's it. And they do this stuff not only so they can get breaks during the during the year. And these big breaks is because if their schedule is backloaded, they could really sit back and see, hmm, do we have to play this hard this game? Do we have to play hard uh, hard this game? W what do we got to do to get into the damn play in? That's all that's gonna happen. So their schedule is already nonsense. I, I don't know how anybody hasn't even talked about this. How do you need this many days off to play at home again? I don't understand. Next. Next on the menu. <laughs> what the hell is a tournament? Can anybody tell me what a tournament is? Well, a tournament and this is a playoff too. It's the same thing, playoff, tournament, whatever. It's supposed to just be a tournament, but they made some fancy name called the playoffs, whatever. So, well, I, I guess you can say it, it is different. I'm, I'm sorry. A playoff, you're playing more than one game. So, oh, um, but, but, but still, still yet. Still yet. This is how it always works in the American way. I don't know what they do in over there in Europe and all that stuff how we knew a tournament was you're not playing in the regular season right this is do or die every single game even if you're playing in the playoffs really if you're playing the playoffs and you're playing the best out of five best out of three best out of seven it's still do or die because you need to win those games um not that you're going to get eliminated in every single game in the playoffs but it's more do or die than a regular season but of course we know what a tournament or a playoff is you're not playing in the regular season the season stops the season is over it's over when you go to a tournament you have the mindset of playing in the tournament you're not playing a regular season game with a with a mindset of a regular season game the next game is a playing game so now you got to have the mindset of a damn tournament now what and then the next three games is a regular season game so you're back in regular season mindset mode only to have the game after that the game after your third game which would be the fourth game you're back in tournament mode what what kind of dumb ish is this look folks this is dumb enough just to have an in-season tournament but what i thought it was what i thought it was they were gonna stop the nba regular season games and play a tournament why not if you're gonna play a damn tournament play a damn tournament that's it It's not that hard. And you still count those games. You play a tournament every single day until the tournament's over. And if you want to add those games to the regular season games, that's fine too. Or if you don't want to do that, shorten the damn season like they wanted. Ain't that what they want? They wanted to shorten the season. So give them what? I don't know, 80, 80, 72 games or something like that? 70 games? And the rest of the games will be the end season tournament other than that other than that you're not playing a damn tournament that's ridiculous you can't go from uh, the mindset of a regular season game and then the mindset of a tournament game and then you have to play four or five games of a regular season mindset and then you pop up and you're playing the mindset of a tournament game how dumb is this how dumb is it It makes no sense. And in fact, you can get rid of the damn All-Star game. Instead of having another, because nobody wants to play it. It's gotten so bad, we got women. We got WNBA women shooting around and playing games at men's All-Star games. Really? What the hell is that? I don't give a damn if they're WNBA women. Nobody watches that trash. I don't give a damn if they had 
half the ratings of the NBA, the WNBA, it's not acceptable for women, even WNBA women, to be participating in a man's all-star game. Are you kidding me? Because the, the, the NBA men can't fulfill the needs of their fans. They have to start bringing in gimmicks from a league, the WNBA, that nobody watches. And I can see it now. Caitlin Clark will be in a damn NBA All-Star game soon. In some capacity, she'll be doing something. She'll be shooting a three. Or they'll have some little stupid thing now. Because they play zero defense. And a WNBA woman will be allowed to be on at least one WNBA player will be allowed to be on the East and the West. Before you know it, these WNBA women will be captains of the East and West. It's just ridiculous. Just get rid of the All-Star game and do the in-season tournament for a week. That's all you do. Especially if you're paying these guys. You're paying these guys for an in-season tournament. You're paying them to work? Wait, hold on. You get paid, these guys are getting paid 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, and 60 million. And you're trying to supposedly, this is what they're telling you. We, we keep trying to figure out how they're making this kind of money. And nobody's watching this crap. It has the lowest ratings of all time. Nobody's watching this crap. And they do less. They do less on both sides of the court. All they do is shoot threes. You got guys who ain't even top 10 players have the biggest record-breaking contracts of all time. Jalen Brown. What? At, at this point, I, I think they're making, trying to turn people into idiots. Right? They're, they're, they're trying to really make people really believe these guys are making all this money, but they need a podcast to make money, but they need to... Look at Danny Green. I just seen him the other day. He's on ESPN as an analyst. This guy... Had to make upwards than 200 million in his career. Man, why you counting that man money? Okay, let's count his money then. Hold on. I'm just saying. Oh, um, if you made 200 million, why would you need to the, the put on makeup and read from a teleprompter? Would you would you be somewhere on a damn island never to be seen again? So this guy made a hundred a hundred million in his career. Came in in 09 making um the minimum four hundred thousand next year. Damn, he really dropped the next year. What's going on with that? I don't know what he did the next year, but he only made ninety four. 94,000. Wow. He might have been hurt. And then he went up to 800 next year. Next year, 3 million. Next year, uh, 3.7. Next year, 4 million. Next year, 10. Next year, 10. Next year, 10. Next year, 10. Next year, 14. Next year, 15. Next year, 10. Next year, 9. Next year, 2. And then he ended his career 200,000. <laughs> oh, wow. Folks, I, I, after you saw them 10s and 10s for like five years and then a 14, and I don't think I could get on the court to make 200000 Because after that, you talk about taxes and lawyers and agents and manager fee. What would that 200000 be? What would you be paying? How much would you really be playing for? Seriously. After they took all that out of that 200000 how much would you really be making? Huh. 50 That's why I said I, I cannot believe these guys are making this kind of money. And I, I really didn't even suspect that until the, the 2020s when they say the ratings are falling off the map, but these guys are making record-breaking uh, contracts. How does that make any sense? How is, uh, how is ESPN and all these other networks want to bid all these billions of dollars for not, something nobody's watching? You're bidding all this money for nobody's watching this. So is, it, is that a lie too? So they can charge the people who want to do commercial ads on the networks more money? That, that, none of this makes any sense. 
But, what, but yeah, getting back to my point, how are these guys getting 500000 which is piss money? You can watch, if you're telling me these guys are making this kind of money, and you're being serious, $10 million a year, that's like damn near the minimum for a guy who is off of his rookie contract these days, right? Um, that's like a minimum, right? Ten million. These guys are making ten million, twenty million, thirty more, thirty million, forty million, fifty million, sixty million. And you're trying to tell me you have to give them toilet paper money, five hundred thousand, to play in this tournament? Ah, even if you was giving them a million, that's toilet paper money, right? Wipe your ass with it. I don't understand. But you got to pay these guys to play basketball. Right? So if you're trying to tell me if you didn't pay these guys toilet paper money, they would not go out and compete for that cup. Let me tell you something. Even if they would do some kind of gimmick like this in the 90s, those players would still, they wouldn't need no money. They wouldn't need toilet paper money to go out there and win that cup because they would want that on their mantle. That's how competitive they were. But like Sports and Fitness Rant says, these guys are getting paid to go to work because they don't want to work. They low manage, they play hurt, and they bull ish around. And I truly, I, I think it's about time that people come to the grips either you can't have it both ways you can't say these guys are really making these kind of contracts or they're really not making this kind of money they're just lying to their fans so they can charge them this type of money because and that's why they're, they're, they don't want to play no more Every game, it, it, there's no outrage from the from the coaches, the owners, nothing like that. There's no outrage because they're really not getting paid this money. So they're like, well, we're, well, we're not really going to play. But I don't have any solid proof, but something has to be going on because none of this stuff is adding up with the viewership and them not playing is making the game worse. Them not calling um, travel carry travel. Them not being competitive. Is making it worse so in essence the league is going down but the owners don't want to make their players have any standards that don't, don't that seem kind of odd so let's say this is true these guys are really making these record-breaking contracts and getting paid all this money amongst nobody's watching this trash let's say all this is true right If all this is true, they're still making this kind of money. Then basically, they're pissing all over the fans. That's going and paying to see these players play. That's supporting them and buying their merch, their shoes, everything. Support. They're, they're basically pissing on their fans by not showing up, by low managing, by always being hurt. These guys are podcasting instead of getting in the gym and getting strong. How are these guys always hurt? It makes no sense. So you, you guys can say what you want to say. You guys can make up all these excuses. You can do all this stuff. It does not bother me. It don't bother me. But something is not adding up uh, uh, about this whole NBA. Where's, where's the money to pay these guys record-breaking contracts if, if, if they're not the viewership isn't there. And if they're not, if they're getting all this money, how are they pissing in the eyes of the fans by not even showing up to work? That, that doesn't make any sense. So something's got to give. Um, Yeah, so this in-season tournament, just in time, everybody's hurt, everybody's brittle, everybody done fell out, and fell into pieces. So who's going to be playing? Um, we saw in the group pool, the Lakers 
they have the Jazz. I'm like, really? The Jazz? The Utah Jazz. Hmm. Their best player plays in damn Cleveland now. And they play the Brittle Suns. OKC lost their best player in Holmgren, and he's probably, what, a top three center this year so far? Um, and, of course, the Spurs. So I guess this would be a perfect time to talk about Wimby. Um, yes, he's had a couple of good games, but this is what I'll tell you. I don't know for sure, but I have to go look at it. But just about every time I've seen him play, I mean, I've seen him play, but looked at the stats. Because they don't really show his games where I live. When I look at his stats, half of his shots that night came from three. And of course, he bricked it up. J just about every time I looked. Oh, the, the 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 past couple games, no. But look, this guy is seven four. How the hell is half of your shots coming from three point range? And this is, and, and don't make any excuses. Half of Joel MB shots, half of Joker shots, half of AD shots are not from three point range. And of course, they are not as tall as him. Therefore, all Wimby has to do is get down there to the block, demand the ball, turn around, and dunk on these guys. And ninety-five percent of those points will be right there, and nobody could stop them. And if you drew the double team, guess what? Now you kick it out to your three-point guys. They did that in Houston with Hakeem. Bombs away. They threw it to Mad Max and Kenny Smith and all these other guys. Mario Eli. Uh, same thing. And that's why I tell you we had different styles in the nineties. Same thing with the um. Who was that? Same, same thing with the Magic. You try to come double shack. Bombs away. Yep. Bombs away. With the Orlando Magic. You know who was it? Brian Shaw, Nick Anderson. Uh, Scott Skiles, these type of guys. And listen, listen, Pops, you're sick, you're having heart attacks, and this is why. Because you're no longer able to coach NBA basketball. NBA, American NBA basketball, Pops, does not exist. It doesn't exist. This is a game where the NBA says if you don't all play the same way, four guys at the three-point uh, line and one guy in the middle, then we don't want you in our league. We want it to be soft. We want it to be soft as can be. One, for LeBron. For two, I think just because these players really aren't getting paid this money. So you they're getting record-breaking contracts just to all sit at the three-point line. And when the ball goes up, you don't battle for an offensive um, rebound. What do you do? You take off to the other side. That's it. That's all you have to do to make record-breaking contracts and nobody's watching this crap. Something ain't adding up. Something ain't adding up, folks. So this, this looks good. This looks good for the Lakers. They're getting all this rest. Of course, they don't have to play in a real tournament. What a real tournament isn't in the regular season and you play every other day or every other two days depending on <coughs> excuse me d depending on the uh, schedule or whatever like that but you play the next game in a damn tournament you don't play the next damn game in the regular season so you gotta be real with you guys because you got you got to be real with yourselves about the NBA. They just, it, it, I, I, I told you, this ain't really a real sports league. So in Group C, it sounds like we're in the Olympics, a group. Group A, B, C, this is like the Olympics, right? So Group C, you got Denver. Oh, you got the Mavs. You got the Pelicans. <laughs> you got the Warriors. And you got Memphis. Wow. Hmm. In Group A, you have the Timberwolves, the Clippers, the Kings, 
the Rockets, and you had the Trailblazers. In Group B, OKC, Phoenix, the Lakers, the Jazz, and the Spurs. Well, you you might think Group B with the Lakers on it, it is is a good it's a good group. Like I said, on paper, it's not the hardest group. And again, how you should measure this type of stuff is based on who did what in the regular season and in the playoffs last year. That's how that's how you would really measure these things, right? In the real playoffs, what happens? Well, the number one seed plays the eight seed, and the two seed plays the seven seed, and on and on and on. So Denver, I mean not Denver, uh, the Clippers should be playing the, the, the weakest seed. And or should just we're doing group right should be in the easiest group and then when we look over here at um the Mavs who lost in the finals but was in the finals they should be in the weakest group pool right because they was runner up in the finals this stuff that they're playing right here this lottery ball stuff that we, we already most people with common sense but there's not a lot of people in the world with common sense that's why they play the lottery right this lottery group pool type of thing is is fake the lottery is fake. The lottery is fake. That, that's already been exposed. The lottery is fake, right? And we won't even get into that. You gotta be a dummy if you, if you think that that lottery on TV is real. It's fake. That's why you gotta have your numbers in at a certain time. The computer, once you get those numbers in, that can, computer can just scramble all those numbers real quick to make everybody a loser. And it's been going on for a long time. And most of their winners are just, what do you call them, uh, crisis actors. But we'll, we'll just leave that alone. Even though we did it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how that should be played out. What you did last season during the regular season, it shouldn't be no damn lottery type of thing because the lottery is rigged. So what are you? I don't get it. So why don't they, they just do that in the playoffs then? Do some damn lottery type of things and see what happens. Because this lottery so far for the second year favors the Lakers. Two years in a row, this in-season tournament lottery has favored the Lakers. Let me look at the East. The East, Knicks or Group A, Knicks, Orlando, 76ers, Brooklyn, and the Hornets. Hey, that that one's tougher than the one that um the Lakers are in. Um, B. You have the Bucks, Pacers, the Heat, the 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 Pistons, and you have the Raptors. And C. Boston, Cleveland, wow, Boston, Cleveland, Chicago, Washington, and Atlanta. And like I said, man, if look, look, this is what I'm going to say. I don't have nothing bad about how Wimby's been playing lately except for all these threes. It, 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 sh show me wrong because you're shooting like 25% from three this year. So you ain't show me nothing but a couple good games. Now, what I want you to do is, yeah, you might not beat the Lakers, but I want you to come out there and dominate. This is what great players do. They come out there and they dominate. Yes, Michael Jordan wasn't going to beat the Celtics. Wasn't going to beat the Pistons. Wasn't going to beat these teams because he didn't have the teams, right? Um, but still yet, he went out there and dominated. That's what great players do all the time. They might not have a uh, player for player to beat you, but they will come out there and show you that they're a great player. Wimby did not do that in the Olympics. Wimby did not do that in a, in a gold medal round. That was a, a big disappointment. Great players play like great players regardless if they win or they lose. That's why they're great players. Everybody can't win. And just because you lose, that don't mean you wasn't a great. So Charles Barkley won a great player. John, uh, John Stockton. Um, Reggie Miller. Even a lot of guys from LeBron's era, from the 70s, from the 60s, these guys were still great players. So Wimby's been a big disappointment in the Olympics, basically the preseason for the most part. I mean, the regular season. So again, especially against great competition, you need to show up like you're an all-time great. Or like you're, you're trying to be an all-time great. So show up Friday against the Lakers and dominate. Dominate. There's no way. AD should be putting up more points than you. Dude, you're 20 years old. You should be putting up 35, damn 10 to 12, in, in, in three blocks. 
Get out of here, man. I don't care about nobody starting to get good. You need to get good. Okay? That's it. Show up and dominate. You lose. Okay. All young, great players lose because they, their teams suck. It's rare that, that young players win because they, they get on the crappiest teams. Now, if you get on a, a good team and you lose, huh, a la LeBron James. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I want to see from Wimby. And I've just been disappointed about him this year. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, it, 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 when we look at stuff like this, it's Group C, and you got the Warriors, the Mavs, the Pelicans, um, the, Memphis, the Grizzlies, and you have Golden State, all of them in the same damn. That's ridiculous. It reminds me of when we in the Olympics, right? They had all the great teams in Group A, all the second great teams in Group B. But when you look down to Group C, that was the worst group pool. But guess what? United States was in there. Ah! Is that just a coincidence? Is that just a coincidence? Now LeBron again in the NBA is in the worst group pool, just like last year. All these players are getting hurt, the, the great players. And, and look, guys, it, it, I won't doubt if this whole thing lines up, right, where, you know, Bronny is playing these um, only home games down there in the G League, but is playing, going back to the NBA when the G League team goes on the road. And this, if this thing lines up to where the Lakers are in the championship game, when Bronny's team, G League team, is on the road, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something ain't right with this. This whole thing was set up. Mark my words from today. Mark my words from today. Because they're trying to get Bronny in that in season tournament to raise these fucking, uh, well, excuse my language, raise these ticket prices, get more merch sold, all this stuff, man. Tell me what you think.